I'm so happy to be here. Uh, I only have 13 minutes. Usually I do this presentation around 45 minutes. I've, of course, blocked a couple of slides. Uh, but it might be that I have to speak a little bit quicker and I can't really give you all the references or cases or examples. So if you want to come by afterwards, we can talk more if you like. So how can we get customer focused and agile mindset to navigate in complexity? Uh, this is something that I've been working with for a very long time. I've been working with product development for around 20 years. And just as Mike said, I also have this kind of a black idea what, where Agile is going. So I hope I can share some examples of what you can do if you want to have this kind of purpose and customer focus. So sometimes when we're working, uh, we can't really see the customer. It's like a funnel. We're just focusing on the next deadline, delivery, or what we have, or maybe weekend or end of the day. And maybe somewhere in the tunnel, sometimes we see the customer. It could be that we're also maybe too far away. We're working with strategies. We're very far up. Or we may be into the details. But so what are the tells that you can't really get this customer focus in your day-to-day -day work? Uh, one of them is that you're focusing on delivering, but you can't really see the purpose, you can't deliver value. Uh, it's difficult to actually get that value from your deliveries. Or maybe you're just focusing on actually delivering what you're already committed to. You're sticking to the plan too much. Could also be, is this working? Yeah, that we might see that we have different plans that stretch in different directions. Could be in the company as a whole, or it could also be me as an individual actually involved in different projects that I see don't really connect. And I don't know what the clicker is doing. Uh, it, this is also some of the things that I see a lot. I don't know if you have it in your workplace and here in Poland, but we have so many meetings that we don't really know why we're there. And we're kind of wondering, when are we going to have time to actually work on this and deliver something? So who's doing the real job? And innovation and improvement doesn't really have a place in a day-to-day -day work. This is an uh, improvement or innovation box that I found at a client's. Uh, it was hidden also behind a curtain. And I think the CEO kind of looked in this once a month or something and brought up some good ideas. And Possibly those good ideas were not so good anymore. So this could be also uh, a tell that you could see in an organization. And of course, then new players will come, hit the market, deliver products that customer likes more. So we have become a snail and we get sharks that's going to eat us. Of course, our employees, people working in the organization, might feel a little bit out of order due to long time stress. Because it is stressful when you can't see that you actually do something of purpose. If you can't deliver value, you get stressed. So th these are some of the actual things that could happen when you have these kind of an unflexible organization. So why is it like this? Well, what I see is that we have too many people involved in actually delivering customer value. So when we talk about agile teams, we want to have maybe five to seven people, optimal state. That's because we don't have to communicate with that many. We can make decisions much quicker and we can also collaborate in a good way. Maybe if you're not organized in that way that your team can deliver value, you might have to have as much as it says over there, 14 people involved, and then you have 91 possible contact lines. Of course, that brings you a lot of meetings, takes a lot of time, and it removes your focus on the customer. This also brings us to this context switching problem. If you're involved in many things, I was working at an agency where we had customers, of course, and I was involved with with seven customers at the same time. I was also working with improvement of our way of working internally. I had so many different roles. I was a project manager. I was a UX expert. That was what I was hired for. Uh, but I did so many things, and everyone else did too, for all of these clients at the same time. So working with seven clients at the same time, you could see I could possibly 
not to deliver any value. I felt like a terrible person. I was feeling stressed and I was feeling blocked. I didn't deliver value. I'm kind of getting depressed too. So after a year, of course, I left. So if you're working on one thing, you have 100% focus. You don't have to do context switching. How many in here feel that you can have this focus in your day-to-day -day work? Doing one thing. Oh, we have a couple of people. It's good. You probably have an agile organization where you can focus then. How many have two things? Yeah? Also, maybe the similar amount. Three things? Yeah? Four things? Five things? Yeah, more people. Okay. Six things? Yeah, a couple of two. So, of course, this makes us unfocused, and this is costing a lot of money, too, for the company. So, maybe it's not that you have a lack of resources, maybe you're just doing too many things at the same time. So, this is a really good thing to show people in the organization to get focus. And one of the things also is, of course, that we have teams or departments that have one competence, and we can't deliver as a team value to the customer by ourselves. We have to hand over and collaborate with other teams, which means we're also unoptimized for delivering value to the customer. So if we can't have this end-to-end -end responsibility in our team to actually deliver value, we can't actually do a good job. And maybe we have workplaces or work situations where we can't sit together with people we actually need to work with. Uh, it could be that we have people offshore. These also are problems that we see a lot. In Sweden, we have offices that are optimized not for sitting as a team, but as an individual. It's a big trend in Sweden. Uh, activity-based seating is called. It's the activity that it's optimized for. It's not for teamwork at all. So it's banned to sit at the same desk more than two hours. Uh, so it's obviously not a place where you want people to deliver value. And this is an alarming number, too. If I were a CEO in an organization and we had this, if this was true, I would be terrified. So if only 5% of the people in the organization understand the strategies, of course, they can't make any good decisions, and that's going to be terrible. So this is a true number. And this is, of course, due to people making the strategies and people actually delivering on them, being too far away from each other in a very hierarchical system. So how can we then have this picture of where we're going, the map of where we want to go and the different ways we can get there, it's not obvious to us. Maybe no one has this map. As a product owner, it's your job to have this map, of course, but it could be very difficult if you only own a small portion of this journey. So, next slide, yeah. So, of course, it's due to our organization being too hierarchical and 100 years old. So, of course, that's not fit for what we want to do today. We have very different needs today. And if you make strategies and you make detailed plans, maybe years, it could be five years, two years ahead, of course, it's difficult to change them. And if you're also controlling that you delivered on the plan, that's your job to do that. If you have people working with this, of course, that's not going to make you flexible either. And the people working frontline with the customers knowing the customer needs, if they can't change the plan and adapt quickly, we're going to fail. So, what can we do to fix this? Of course, you know the answer, right? Uh, but I think you should see it as a business strategy that we want to be a shock. We don't want to be a snail. We need to make the decision. This is not okay. If we are just focusing on doing what we're doing and not changing, we are going to become the snail and someone's going to come and eat us. And we should mobilize the brain power and get customer focus. This is also a strategy that we need to focus on and decide on. And we should enable collaborative teamwork. This is, of course, crucial for the people in the organization to be able to deliver. They need to be able to sit together and have focus, have creativity, and put things on the walls. And this is, of course, something we need to do as well. We need to 
innovate together. This is, uh, I don't know, can you see the whole thing? No. So underneath here to the left, it says impact now, impact soon, and impact long term. Of course, we need to work on these different perspectives, but we also need to work together. And if you're only working down here with improving your existing processes, you are going to become a snail. And if you focus more on the top, it says business model and customer experience, then you will become a shark. That's where it's most easiest to actually disrupt and become better than your competitors. And if you're not doing this, of course, we will get this process debt, and we will have technology debt, product debt, customer experience debt, and also business model depth. So of course, we need to do these things continuously together. We can't work in silos. We can't have people telling others what to do because then we're not utilizing the brain power in our organization. So this is also a business strategy. Work together on these different things. And also climbing the customer focus stairs. This is something that's also really, really important. Focus on the customer. This is a business strategy too. Now, I don't think you can read what's in the bottom here. This is UX hostility, where we think that we know better than the users. We know what they want, and they should do what we tell them to do. They need to learn how to use the things that we're doing. So this is the lowest step. I don't know. I see this a lot in the top of the organizations. Maybe not so much with people working in the teams, but we need to change the mindset then. Step two is that we have development-based UX, where we are interested, but we're focusing on delivering what we already decided. So if we have these long-term plans, how can we change the strategy when we get new learnings? Maybe we can't. And UX guerrilla style, we're interested, we're going out, we're meeting the customers, we're learning about their needs, if they like what we're doing. But it's also very difficult to change and make strategic decisions based on this. So having UX part of the budget, that's a good thing, of course, and we can get more organized. We could get a higher level of coordination in UX and organized UX work, which is the next step. Uh, it's a competence, it's not a role, it's not a team sitting somewhere, it's a competence that we have in our teams and everywhere. And maybe we have customer experienced people uh, that can coach others and train them to do this. Systematic CX processes, where customer experience is formalized and highly prioritized. An integrated customer experience. Agile teams with missions and service design plays a key role in the organization. The system is also supporting self-service. So these are some of the things that we will look on in the rest of the presentation, how you can enable this. And at the top, of course, customer experience is permeating everything. It's all around us, and it's the organizations organized around the customer to enable this and deliver this. This is how we make our decisions, our strategies based on this. And of course, we need to create an organization where we can have this. We need to have leadership that leads with purpose and vision. We need to have cross-functional teams, maybe more of a network organization, so they can actually focus on the customer and deliver value continuously. So I would say, that agile and customer experience and customer focus is a business strategy, is something that management need to understand and they need to make these decisions. We don't want to die. That's the most important thing. So we need to change. We need to do this together. So having leadership that understands business agility and can enable this, remove impediments in the whole organization. So here are a couple of things that I think that they need to change, mostly. Uh, so stop focusing on ownership focus, which is a short-term focus, moving towards customer focus, which is a long-term focus. And stop doing the detailed yearly budgets and moving to a shared purpose and vision. And stop focusing on control, of course, move into transparency and focus on trust. And of course, this resource optimization needs to stop as well, thinking that everyone needs to be occupied all the time and move into flow optimization. This is something I also see in agile organizations where you think it's most important that all teams are doing what they're experts in or that 
working 100% just writing code, maybe that's not flow optimization either. And at the bottom, where we have a text hiding it, uh, it says move away from top-down detailed decisions made on gut feeling towards data-driven decisions made on in autonomous teams. So these are some of the things that leadership need to change. So leadership for agility is leading with vision and create leaders, actively support change initiatives. This is something that's going on all the time, right? So we need to have the energy, we need to have actual time to do this. Empowering employees and teams. Everyone is still valuable, even though we start to work agile, we change our roles and everything. But your skill is needed, you are needed, and you have a place. You need to join us and work together with others. And create this space where it's safe to fail. This is also something that management needs to focus on. Optimizing the whole system and removing impediments. It cannot only be in the teams, it's outside of the teams. That's what's holding the teams back. Prioritize sustainable change so we can continuously do this and not see it as a project. It's not going to be over in three months, like Mike said. It's never going to happen. It's going to continuously demand focus on improvement. And enable that insight needs to action quickly. Because the teams will have insights on the customers. They need to be able to make these decisions. And management needs to enable this to happen. So Agile teams on a mission, uh, this is something that I've been working with a lot. And this is where we combine maybe Lean UX with Agile, Scrum, and ways of working. So connecting these things into one team and have a mission for the team. So we need to have a truly cross-functional team where we have all the competences from different parts of the organization. I'm going to show an example. I really hope I have time. Uh, T-shaped people, of course, where we have more than one specialist competence. We're learning from each other. We're helping each other to build what's valuable for the customer. It's not just UX people doing use research. It's everyone joining in and helping out. Everyone helps out to test if it's working. Those kind of things. And teams that actually has this kind of a mission, which leads them continuously, like a North Star. This is what we want to happen in the future for these kind of customers, and the team can decide what needs to be done. And instead of having maybe, like many teams have today, a regular backlog where we have things that's been four years old in there, it's molded, it's bad, it's someone else's product, have something which maybe it's more based on a hypothesis, where you can direct and change solutions along the way. So keep it on a hypothesis level, so you can actually deliver what's most valuable right now, and don't spend much time on actually understanding what you need to deliver beforehand. And doing discovery and delivery in the teams. Never put that outside of the team. It should be done in the teams, because then you have the knowledge, you can make the right decisions, you don't need anyone else to tell you what to do, you can be truly, truly independent from others. And in the bottom it says, make data-driven decisions, of course. Meet customers, look at data, have both different types of data that can lead you in the right way, and don't hesitate to understand more about the customers if you need to. It's not someone else's job, it's your job to do it. Make decisions based on that. To do this, of course, we need to have one organization, we're one business. It's been a lot of this IT is delivering to the business, the business has the money, IT is only costing money. This kind of mindset was just totally sick to me. I don't understand how you can survive if you have this kind of mindset. And I see a lot of organizations, me and Elaine had a discussion just earlier, that uh, you as a business start this new shadow IT organization because the old IT is getting so slow. I wonder why. They never become enabled to make good decisions. Someone's always telling them what to do. So of course they're getting slow. They don't use their brain because you took that away from them. But instead we need to create one business where we can work together, make smart decisions and be flexible. This is also something that you need to focus on. If you only start up this X kind of organization, you've lost, I would say. So this, some examples of how you can connect teams to the customer. This is not a silver bullet, it's not a recipe. 
I really hope that you don't see it that way. It's uh, some inspiration. So you can connect your organization to the customer journey. And also, of course, the employee journey. You have different journeys. You can connect teams directly to the customer with this vision. So, of course, there are organizations already doing this. We worked with one bank doing this. It's going to be a case that I'm going to show in just a couple of minutes. And Spotify is doing this partially. Uh, Airbnb has been doing this. It could be teams working then with onboarding or making sure that customers are already in, in the uh, product uh, actually get the product and actually maybe use more of the product over time and maybe come back if they leave. So you can have different focuses based on where you're at in the customer journey. And of course, we want to have autonomy and alignment in our organizations. If we only have autonomy, we can't really collaborate and help the customer move smoothly through the product. So we need to have alignment too. So one of the things we can do, we can have these kind of company bets. So all teams have 100% time. We can say some of the percentage it's OK that we have something that goes across the organization. These kind of ideas could come from management, the top leaders, or it could actually come from the teams as well. If we see our team has this great idea, we pitch it to the others, everyone else thinks this is what we need to do. Everyone needs to pitch in maybe a couple of percent, maybe a couple of sprints to make this happen. Let's do it. So this is a way where you can plan your time in connection to others. But you also have your mission in the team, which you can focus long term, maybe six months, maybe a year, to achieve something bigger. Help the customer to do something really, really good and do what's needed to do that. Cross all touch points, cross all devices, anything. So you need to have the competences in your team. And of course, then we also need to support other teams. It's not only our mission that's important. Everything is important for the customer. And we need to collaborate and help others to deliver value. And of course, we take care of what we deliver. So we have maintenance too in our team. It should never be outside of the team, because then it's not important for us to keep it in a good way, a good shape. So of course, we need to take care of our stuff too. These are the things in our team that we need to plan on. So we have different buckets where we put things. And then we can have this kind of leadership where we are giving the problem to the teams, helping them to find their focus, their mission, helping them to collaborate and deliver value long term and short term. So some real examples then. Uh, this is Avanza, it's a Swedish bank. They're kind of new, I don't know, maybe they've been around for 15 years or something like that. I'm a customer, I really like them. They've always been considered the shark, but they themselves thought that we're getting this kind of snailish now, it's kind of ugly. So the IT, the product manager, the marketing manager, and the operations manager all went together and decided they wanted to create one organization, they wanted to remove all the silos, uh, and people were feeling unhappy, product owners mostly, uh, and they didn't really feel that they deliver value. So what we did, we helped them to create one vision, we helped the team and the people in the teams to evaluate the current organization. We set different, I think it was six different, oh, what do you call it now? I don't remember. Uh, anyone help? Matthias? No? Uh, we set different criteria that they thought were good for the organization that they could evaluate against principles. Now I remember it. <laughs> uh, that meant something for them. So they evaluate their organization, the different types of organizations, and they choose to have a customer journey organization instead. And uh, they had self-selection, which you can see here. So you've got to choose which team, which mission, which product owner to join, where you could contribute the most with your T-shape. And uh, they formed 11 agile teams on a mission. They have leadership teams, which are cross-functional. This organization now has increased the speed of value and, of course, the value itself to the customers. They have these kind of teams where there are 11 people kind of in each team. So they're doing lean UX, they're taking care of the products, they're doing user research, they're doing A-B testing, they're doing all of that shit in the team, which is fantastic 
And they had a vision, too, with this change. They wanted the teams to feel like they were startups. So they were measuring, of course, how people felt in the organization, how happy they were, how happy their stakeholders were, and the delivery and the speed of the organization. And, of course, people were feeling so much happier, and they know that now people in the teams, they feel like they are a startup because they have the budget, they have the mandate, they have the people, they have the mission, they have the support for management. Management is stepping outside and just cheering. Good job. So this is a true success. This is another example of an organization it's in the public sector, it's the Swedish radio, where we coached a team to do these kind of same thing, but within one team. But they needed to collaborate with other teams in the organization as well, which were not working like this. But this team had all the different competences needed to deliver on all platforms. And they, of course, they doubled the listening time, and they also widened the audience with 50%. They had never seen these kind of results before. Before, they spent a year just prototyping on paper. They had no ability to deliver value to the customer. Of course, they understood the problems of the customer, but they had no ability to deliver real value. So they were so frustrated. So what we did, we enabled them to collaborate with others, to deliver on all platforms, to get the customer or the, de the actual developers into this team. They had people working as journalists joining the team as well. So this is the true cross-functional team they needed. They didn't need designers doing prototyping and not delivering anything. So they were also really, really happy about this. So keep calm and get customer focus and make sure that you get the abilities that you need to actually do this work together. That's my message. I don't know if you know this, but you can download a hell of a lot of stuff from our website if you like. The posters, we have a poster covering this customer journey based organization. It's just a concept, some ideas. If you want to, you can, of course, use them in your work. So, thank you very much. <laughs>